Brother lads, welcome back to Kosi Sasno Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. We're going to be diving into the latest around Arsenal. A couple of stories for us to dive into. Arsenal are closing in on a sensational wonder kid called Ada Gula. We are playing at Fenerbahce. Barcelona are also trying to sign him. Uh, they are there in the race according to their president. Arsenal in direct contact with the player. And Fenerbahce will be diving into that story. Uh, we are talking Nuno Tavares. The agent says he wants to stay at Arsenal, but the final decision will be made by Mikel Arteta. So should Nuno Tavares stay at Arsenal? Should we let him go? Let me know in the comment box below. There are a couple of clubs interested, including West Ham. We are also talking Romeo Lavia. West Ham, uh, you know, Liverpool actually and Arsenal are really interested. Uh, it is a two-horse race according to Fabrizio Romano and it could be very, very interesting. Thomas Party talks to Excel Accelerate next week as Rice signs for Arsenal. And of course, we are talking Lokonga will be going to Burnley uh, to join up with Vicento Company. They do a work together at Unalleged. It could be reuniting this season. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the podcast as well. Let's get this one to 500. In the comment box below, I want to know your thoughts on Nuno Tavares. Now, he's been out on loan at Marseille. And he's done very well. Like, in terms of scoring goals and creating assists, he's actually done very well. I also think he's had that impact uh, where he's played in the Alexander Zichenko role more often than he did at Arsenal. So, what do you think about uh, Nuno Tavares' successful loan campaign at Marseille? We could lose Carantini. Does it, does it make sense? You, do you understand? Like, he comes back backs up you know alexander zichenko who is injury prone by you know by the way or do you think his defensive liabilities could cost arsenal something very very dear so we sell him and go and find another option in the market let me know in the comment box below and i also wanted to ask you uh one one other you know question if arsenal do not sign romeo lavia if part uh, and Pater leaves and we don't get romeo lavia he goes to liverpool which which player do you think Arsenal should focus on to replace Thomas Partey? Romeo Lavia is the key priority, but if, if Partey leaves and Romeo Lavia goes to Liverpool, one player in the comment section that you think Arsenal should sign to replace Thomas Partey. Do not say Aurel and Chouameni. But let's dive into the stories. Let's start off with um, uh, the Declan Rice little update. He will be putting on shirt number 41 that has been confirmed uh, now. His medicals will take place next week, like I reported, and he will be uh, shooting with shirt number 41, uh, you know, in the Arsenal media shoot. So that is confirmed. Next week, you will see Declan Rice with that big shirt, shirt number 41. The big Arsenal signing with a big shirt. He's, oh, look, we, we've been told that he will be an Arsenal captain. Uh, in the future, uh, that is part of the package. That is what of, uh, part of what we actually promised them. So just imagine Arsenal having that big guy uh, in Declan Rice putting on shirt number 41. Um, don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with shirt numbers. Like, I'm not too attached with shirt numbers. Of course, when Edin Ketia took on that shirt number 14, I was absolutely fuming. Ever since then, I decided that shirt number 14 uh, and whatever shirt number a player puts on does not dis uh, determine and define how good the player is. Remember shirt number 19, Santi Cazola was purely a sensation. He was an absolute genius in that shirt number, shirt number 19. But right now, it's, it's a shirt number that we have not even rested. It's a shirt number that anyone can come in and pick, you know, pick up, uh, do well or do poorly, and no one will, no one will even notice. So... Shot number 41 for Rice, that is uh, going to be, and I really don't have a problem with that. Now, Arsenal are closing in on um, a sensational uh, player, dubbed the next Messi Rozil, dubbed the Turkish Messi Rozil. There are also reports that, um, you know, he plays as Messi. There are also um, reports from Turkey that, uh, you know, he will be the next Martin Odegaard. We are talking about this guy, uh, Young Ada Gola. Now I say young because he's not um, in the age bracket of, of, of Kai Havers, in the age bracket of uh, Declan Rice, but he's a player that has already played two senior campaigns, um, you know, at the top level, you know, for Fenerbahce. Now this is what um, uh, uh, Itali Italian journalist Rudy Galetti has revealed. He says that um, Ada Gula is followed by several teams in Europe. Arsenal, for sure, among among them. But the competition for the Turkish player is going to be really, really fierce. Arsenal and uh, and many, many other clubs are in contact with his father and also with Fenerbahce. So he says that um, at the moment, 
Arsenal are in contact with the father of Adegula to try to sign him uh, this summer. Now, uh, according to Fabrizio Romano, and um, he was quoting the, uh, the Barcelona president here, Juan Laporta, Laporta says that we are talking to Fenerbahce for Adegula. All the top, uh, all the top, uh, all the top European clubs actually want him. Adagula is a very, very young Turkish player, and um, uh, he is on our scouting department. He's been watched by our scouting department uh, for quite some time, and they've followed him for quite a very, very long time. That is according to Barcelona president Juan Laporta, confirming there that uh, Adagula is wanted by so many European clubs. That is number one. But then he also says that at the moment, we are trying to do whatever we can to sign him um, uh, from Fenerbahce. Now, the big story in here is that Arsenal are in contact with Fenerbahce and with the father of Adegula to bring him to the Emirates Stadium. He's only 18. He has a release clause of 17.5 million. 18. He has a release clause of 17.5 million. He's a Turkish maestro. People have said he, you know, he, he exhibits traits of Mesut Ozil, that ability to see the different picture, to pick out a pass that you know, breaks through the lines all the time. And many people have said he's just like Jack Grealish. He's got that ability to um, you know, stick himself to the byline and then dribble and beat players while cutting inside. And of course, other people and other sources in Turkey are saying, this is the next Martin Odegaard. If Odegaard can play football and, you know, maximize, maximize his potential, we already have a successor in Ada Guleb. Now, I've watched a few clips of him. I've not watched a whole season or, or a whole match where Ada Guleb is playing. So I can't lie about that. But I've looked at his numbers. He's a player that is averaging at least a goal or an assist every 100 minutes. You know what that means? That means that... Um, every 90 minutes, you expect that guy to do something. At 18, right? Barely, barely 18. He's a player that you expect to create some magic, to let, to make something happen um, you know, in every single game. Now, Arsenal trying to sign him does not actually worry me. Arsenal trying to sign him does not surprise me as well. I think he's a, he's a player that... Um, uh, reminds me of Chess Fabregas. We've been talking about Chess Fabregas uh, and how you know he became the youngest player to play for Arsenal at 16 years and 77 days uh, in 2003. These are the kind of signings we used to do. These are the kind of uh, deals Arsenal used to do. We used to be maestros. We used to be experts as the you know, at this. Now, if he comes into Arsenal, I don't expect him to play with the under 23s. I really don't. And I don't expect him to um, come and break through the uh, starting 11. Like, I don't think he's better than Saka yet. I don't think he's better than Gabriel Martinelli yet. And he's not better than Kai Havers. And he's not better than Martin Odegaard. Especially with the experience all those players have, have amassed in the Premier League and in Europe as well. So this is what I think. And it's purely, purely my opinion. I think this guy, Gula, should go to Dortmund... He should go to Ajax. They will give him the proper development that he needs as a player. Now, we need some squad depth, of course. But for me, he reminds me. Not reminds me, but I relate his style of play to Pedri at Barca. That kind of player that just, just you know, it, it becomes the metronome of, of the team in midfield, right? And I don't think he's better than Pedri because Pedri is, is, is such... A, a, a key player for Barca and for Spain as well. So if you're going to come in and you want to replace Pedri as the metronome in midfield, you have to be absolutely sensational. I don't see him go to Barcelona B. That would be dwarfing him, in my opinion. So I think Dortmund, as they'll try to replace um, Jude Bellingham, as Ajax try to replace Ryan Gravenbach and all these players they've lost, it could be a nice shot to sign Adagula. But if Arsenal gets him, I would be absolutely, absolutely ecstatic, you know, ecstatic as well. Now, Thomas Partey, 
uh, is expected to accelerate, uh, accelerate talks with uh, the Saudi Arabia consortiums that are trying to sign him next week after Arsenal confirmed the signing of Declan Rice and Julian Timber. Arsenal will focus on the sale of players after signing our key targets. Um, I, was look, I was reading a story and literally it was said that party requested to leave Arsenal rather than Arsenal requesting Thomas Partey to, to leave. So it looks like Partey is the guy that has gone and decided, I want to go. I want to leave. Um, there is nothing for me anymore. The party is over. Uh, I'm done here. Is the party done? I don't think the party is done. Like, to be honest, I don't think the party is done. I think the party is just starting. And if party has personal reasons that he's decided to shun away, from the Premier League, shun away from the club that he loves so much, I would definitely understand and I would definitely respect that. Um, it, it will be very okay by me knowing that Arsenal have not pushed Pate out, that Arsenal have not harassed and, uh, you know, coerced Thomas Pate to leave because that would be absolutely bad, okay? So Thomas Pate is expected to ex accelerate his talks um, in this coming week to make sure that... Um, uh, to make sure that uh, he leaves Arsenal and joins uh, Saudi Arabia. That report is very contrary to what uh, Charles Watts would, would give us uh, a couple of weeks ago. Because with Charles Watts, he says that um, Pate wanted to stay. He wants to play in the UEFA Champions League with Arsenal. So his pri pri primary concern is staying at Arsenal. If that is the case then we might see Pate staying, right? If he wants to stay. And the reasons that are forcing him out of Arsenal Football Club um, are, can be solved amicably. We might see Pate staying, but next week, we expect talks to accelerate and we'll be leaving Arsenal very, very soon. Now, Albert, Albert Konga is one of the uh, few signings that have actually not worked out for under Mikel Arteta and Edu. The other one is Nuno Tavares, that has not worked out yet. Albert Sambilakonga is on the verge of joining Burnley. He, will, he wants to link up with the former manager, uh, Vicente Compani, who is actually managing Burnley, and uh, make sure that they come back to the, uh, to, to the Premier League in the top flight. So he wants to join, to link up. He wants to join up with, uh, with, with, with um, Compani, and Compani also wants the player. He understands him, and he feels, that it, he feels like it will be uh, a very, very good move. What I don't know here is do they want him purely on loan or they want him on, an, on a loan deal with an option to buy? If it's a loan deal with an option to buy or obligation to buy, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. But if it's only a loan deal, I'm concerned. I'm really, really concerned. I think Nuno Tavares and Lokonga and um, um, TNA and um Balagan and Ketia, those are assets you get real money for when, when you when you put them on the market, right? So for me, Lokonga to, to Burnley, I'm okay with that. As long as they can pay us some good money, as long as they, they can guarantee that he plays for us for a full season, and then in the end, we will sign him on a permanent. Because what's gonna happen here is they're gonna test him for one or two good months and um, you know, throw him to the throw him to the bench. He doesn't play for the rest of the season, and then bring him bring him back at Arsenal in a much worse state than actually we gave them to. Uh, you know, we 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 gave them uh, we gave him to them. So in my opinion, let them sign him on an initial loan deal. As their finances get better by staying in the Premier League, they will be able to afford him in the summer of 2024 and they should be paying an obligation fee that is my opinion now Nuno Tavares is the same um the agent has been speaking to the media and he said the player wants to stay at Arsenal but it will depend on Mikel Arteta it's, it's going to be uh, dependent on Mikel Arteta whether he stays at Arsenal or he leaves I think it's very very similar to what I would say with Albert Samilakonga if the manager wants to keep him at Arsenal keep him no problem you signed him, so you believe in him. You've done some work, groundwork on him. And you've, we've always brought him as a backup to our left back, okay? Now, Tavares will feel a little bit um, hard done by that he didn't get the time 
to prove that he's such a good player and maybe fits Mikel Arteta's expectations and ambitions. So he wants another season to prove that. I understand. But if Arsenal are getting good money in the sale of Nuno Tavares, I think we should. However, this is a deal that we need to be very careful with. One, there are not so many players you'll get the quality of Nuno Tavares at, was it what, 9 million euros? 10 million euros? Um, that was very, very good value for money, okay? So, if Arsenal really feel there is no future with Nuno, we can sell him. It will be at a profit. I think West Ham want him. Galatasaray want him. Uh, there's, there are a couple of, and, and Marcel as well. I, w I will be surprised if Marcel don't try to sign him on a permanent. If Marcel don't try to sign him on a permanent, it means they are really sure Arsenal do not want to sell, right? But um, he's one player to keep our eyes on very, very much. The agent says he wants to sell Arsenal and fight for his place. And finally, um, Romeo Lavia, according to Fabrizio Romano, in uh, information is released a couple of days, a, in a couple of uh, hours ago, he says that uh, Romeo Lavia is going to be a two-horse race. He says this June is going to be a very crucial month when it comes to uh, Romeo Lavia and his future. But Arsenal and Liverpool are the only clubs really interested in the in, in the player. No bids yet from Arsenal, no bids yet from Liverpool, but it's going to be a two-horse race, and whoever signs first, um, I mean, whoever tables the money first, signs him first. I think uh, Arsenal have done grand work here. We've talked to Southampton, we've talked to the player, but Liverpool at the moment are leading this race, and I think Liverpool need him more. I've, I've told you about this, um, uh, uh, we've talked about this deal, and I've said that... Um, the one thing I know is Liverpool can guarantee him a starting position. Like McAllister, Lavia, Zoboslai. That midfield trio is, 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 um, is easy to envision, right? It's easier to envision than Lavia, Rice, Odegaard. Or Lavia, Harvest, Odegaard. Because with, with Romeo Lavia, the disadvantage here is that Arsenal have signed a 100 million pound player who only says, I will not play due to injury or to fatigue or because he needs some rest. But he's going to play every single day, every single week. One of the reasons why we've signed him is uh, durability, right? You have the UEFA Champions League, you have um, the FA Cup, the Carabao Cup, and he's a durable player, Declan Rice, who can play across all those competitions. Yes, he will get tired, but his performances will not drop significantly. So it's going to be a two-horse race between us and Liverpool for Romeo Lavia. Let's wait and see what's going to come out of that.